Hi, everyone. Welcome to A New View. I'm Zhuzhi, and I'm here with Shira, Lee, and Kim. We are four friends, speakers, and professionals from different cultures, backgrounds, and age groups coming together to offer healing and inspiration. I've recently discovered an author and physician named Gabor Mate, and I am reading one of his books that he recently released called The Myth of Normal. And he talks a lot about the fact that we as human beings have two core needs, connection and authenticity. And usually one informs the other, meaning the connections that we form as children uh, inform how authentic we are able to be in our adult lives. So this is quite a topic <laughs> to tackle today. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Um, I love Gabor Mate and gosh, he is so full of amazing stuff. You know, you can listen to him for two minutes and go, wow, that's amazing. So yes, those two core needs, connection and authenticity, although they go hand in hand, um, they, they can be messed up sometimes with some of our relationships and actually I remember hearing something about that from Gabor Mate. I was listening to, I, I listened to him uh, sometimes and there is sometimes a compromise between these two things, right? So the connection that we have, let's say from childhood or from infancy with our parents um, is, is, is somewhat of, of this uh, attachment um, that we need. Right. Everybody needs connection. Everybody needs to be attached to someone. We, we need that connection or, or we can't really survive. But um, but to be authentic. Is sometimes compromised by these connections if we are taught certain things or if we hear certain things and we are conditioned to do or 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 be in certain ways, even like, again, as a child and Gabor Monte talks a lot about being children and ch childhood trauma. Um, you know, when your parent tells you don't do this, you know, sometimes the message we get is like, all right, well, if I do this, they won't love me. And then we start to, to act in certain ways in which we think others want us to act. And then it takes us through adulthood. And then here we are <laughs> with all these like fucked up, like, connections. Um, and, and it's very hard sometimes for us to be our authentic self, right? And that is, and that is our true being that is at the core who we are. Um, very, very important to do that. And I think that this is also something that, you know, most of us here have, have learned and, and are trying to get to, you know, or try to reclaim our authentic authenticity because that's who we truly are in our in our heart in our gut um and uh, that that's what i feel for me like it's i am still trying to find my true authenticity unapologetically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. god i can so relate to everything you just said which just makes me emphasize and you have all heard me talk about this but like we teach so much stuff to our young people, right? We teach them all the subjects they need to know about how to write, how to, you know, do math and about science and the universe, just all this stuff we teach our children, but we don't do a good enough job about teaching them about themselves. Like you can talk about communicating with other people, but you also communicate with yourself and nobody talks about that. So that's why it's like, we have all this knowledge, but not enough wisdom. And I think children are very, very smart and they would be able to understand these things as if we were able to like reinforce it as they get older, where it's like, well, how do you feel? What's your connection to yourself? Are you being authentic? Are you being honest with yourself? I mean, for years, I wasn't being honest with myself. Not only was I not being honest with myself about certain things like my people pleasing and other stuff. I didn't even know. I didn't even know I was doing it. I was completely unaware. <laughs> That's our favorite word, right? Awareness. 
So like, I don't know, I just feel like education just deserves such a shift in focus because they're not necessarily getting it at home, right? We, our parents, our parents' parents, like nobody taught them either. But now that we're becoming more conscious and we're becoming more aware, we owe it to the next generation to teach them about these very important life skills about, you know, how we treat ourselves, how we talk to ourselves, how we connect with ourselves. It's such a wasted opportunity. Well, and I think that one of the things that um, we misunderstand as children, because we don't, we like don't have the skills yet to fully process all of the things that we go through, is that, you know, we interpret certain rejections or course correction or whatever throughout our young lives as like, okay, I can't, like you said, Lee, like I can't do that anymore because that's, that makes me unlovable or that like erodes the connection that I have. So ironically, we take on all of these different character traits that aren't us in order to have connection. But then into adulthood, that's what keeps us from connecting because people can feel the difference between when we are authentically connecting, when we are, you know, um, when we are being ourselves and when we have a wall up, when we have these barriers to entry and this is going to sound really silly, but like, I really love watching dating shows, like dating reality shows. Oh, on- we know. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, but the, is- the audience might not, Shira. No. Okay. Oops. <laughs> and I, I don't talk about it super publicly because it's <laughs> on the surface. It seems like it would be just like a trash pastime like why would you do that but I think that our behavioral patterns are so well demonstrated through these things and you can see like the moment when somebody's wall comes down you it you it's like captured so perfectly when you can see that somebody has an authentic moment And the other person's receptivity to that authenticity is so amazing to watch. And yet, it's so few and far between. And what we're here trying to get to is getting to that authenticity, like, more often than not, more often than than those, like, glimpses instead of like that could be our norm that could be our everyday expression of who we are and the thing is is that even though authenticity feels so so good when it's happening it's definitely usually outside of our comfort zone you know because the comfort zone is what we've created inside of our minds as a coping mechanism for when we weren't accepted for who we were and when it was rejected in some way. So what we're kind of here to learn, which is very difficult, is that we are not for everyone and everyone isn't for us, right? And that is a really difficult lesson in a lot of ways. Like, you don't like everyone you meet, you know, you don't feel instantly aligned with everybody that comes into your life but this, everyone likes me though right exactly like that's <laughs> I was gonna say except for like crazy strange thing yeah. is like there is like this social acceptance desire and yet there isn't this underlying understanding that like when you are the authentic expression of yourself you become a magnet for those who are correct for you and that's why in a lot of ways like the three of you are such a demonstration for me for how differently relationships can go when you do start to express yourself authentically is because like 
I don't think you guys would have been friends with previous Juji. You know, like, I don't think we would have had this kind of dialogue, this kind of like, we are committed to each other. Look, Lee got us these freaking gorgeous necklaces. I haven't taken it off since I got it. Like, we're, we're just, we're on opposite ends of the country. We, you know, like there's a million reasons why we could have stopped doing this show, but we haven't because we feel like our most authentic selves around each other. And that is the most comforting feeling, even if it does at some times take us out of the comfort zone that we initially created. So Mm -hmm. it's kind of this like give and take it's been a ride. It's been a ride. It's been a nice ride, though. Yeah. Love it. The Love landscape it. is always changing. <laughs> <laughs> Such nice metaphors, Lee. <laughs> I was actually watching, uh, there was a, a clip of Gabor Mate's, an interview with him on Instagram that I was watching. And um, I had just recently went on vacation and realized I really needed this vacation I actually really need a vacation alone is what I realized, but it was great to get a vac- to have a vacation and like for the first time in a long time, really shut off to my phone, my computer, work, all the people that distract me, that I allow to distract me so that I am so busy doing those things for those people that I don't really take time to focus on the types of things that Gabor Mate talks about. So here I am on vacation thinking it's going to be like this incredible trip, which of course it was to some degree. I got to see family. I got to see another part of the world. Um, But there was something very heavy weighing on me that I just honestly still can't quite articulate. I think I'm right now in the middle of it. Um, So in a future episode, I'll probably be able to speak to it a little more with more clarity. But in this interview, he talks about poor needs and he's talking about people who are prone to chronic illness. I have psoriasis. It's an up and down journey. It's chronic, right? And when I heard these four points for the people who are prone to chronic illness, I was just like, (laughs) so number one is other people uh, basically that people who are prone to chronic illness um, put other people's emotional needs ahead of their own compulsively. Number two is they over identify with their duties, roles, responsibilities, rather than the needs of themselves. Number three is they repress healthy anger and they don't set clear boundaries. The whole saying, uh, the, the good die young, that's where sort of that comes from. Um, And four, um, the belief that you are to be responsible for how others feel, ding, ding, ding. And uh, you must never disappoint anyone. Mm. And, um, you know, he talked all about how the mind and the body, you know, can't be separated and all that stuff. But I relate to, so this resonates. This is me. He's talking to me. I'm one person out of, I'm sure, thousands who are like, that's but like that's me and tell you girls like I thought that I I've done so much work I've done so much therapy I've delved into myself I've spent time figuring shit out and I I I, what I saw on that vacation was a lot of triggers these old you know like triggers come up and they're there to I guess help you heal from old wounds and so many triggers came up I saw myself like really saw myself taking care of everyone else Um, I saw myself putting myself second I saw myself saying yes when I wanted to say no I saw all these things and all I kept thinking was like haven't I learned these fucking lessons already like haven't I freaking learned what I like Am I still on this journey? And look, I know I'll be on this journey for my whole life, but I thought it was kind of way past. Juju was actually very relieving when you just said about the attraction because I was like, oh good, I attracted you guys. So I must be doing something right. (laughs) (laughs) 
but seriously, like I'm on, in the middle of this messiness right now. And I'm like, you know, there's a part of me, you know, we sure you said it in a previous episode. There's a part of me that's like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I know what to do. I know what to do. Do I know what that is? No, but I know that it'll come to me. I know that I'll keep asking for help. Um, Juju, you mentioned when we were kind of preparing for one of our episodes, like sometimes it's just about asking, like, what is the next step? What am I meant to see in this next step that will help me? And that's where I am right now, this moment. That's where I am. Mm, that's beautiful. And, and I do believe, <laughs> yes, that, that of course, you know, we've, we've done so much work, but I don't know that we could ever say like, we're, you know, I'm done. Like, and, and even if, if something very, I wish, um, <laughs> even if something very similar comes along that we've tackled before and we got over and we we're empowered, you know, it's like, we, we, we still need to do it all over again, you know, but can we do it quicker? Can we do it more efficiently? You know, what, what have we learned? What didn't serve us? Um, I love how Juju, you were, you were mentioning the authenticity part and how it is um, out of our comfort zone, because I, I think for most of us, it is. And I, I think of authenticity also very similar to vulnerability, because I find that um, when I am vulnerable and and I'm, I allow myself to be vulnerable about uh, with people that I'm surrounded with, that I am my most authentic and um and that's what i feel like i also seek in my life now that's why i manifested you guys and i i seek it in in everywhere you know uh, even if it's work colleagues and and we don't need to have a very close tight knit relationship but i i want to be around authentic people i want to be around people who speak their truth um and who you know look it's okay if somebody's afraid and they just don't do it, but I, the alternative sucks, right? The negativity sucks. Um, I was listening, I was watching this video of John Edward, you know him, the psychic medium. Psychic guy? Yeah. He's a psychic medium. He lives in New York and, you know, um, I, I had gone to see him once in, in a big venue, but uh, he was being interviewed by, I think it was Maria Menunos, and uh, I'll, I'll never forget this whole metaphor for for, for life or or surrounding yourself with people because um, he <laughs> he basically said, you know, um, I think of the people that you know are negative in your life, and you know think of, think of your life as a pool, and who do you want not swimming in your pool? Right. And, and and it's also a vibe and an energy. And, and so you have this pool and who's going to be swimming in my pool. Right. The one thing you don't want is for people to pee in your pool. And if you're <laughs> going to pee in my pool, you're out. So these are the people that are more authentic and you're OK with them being in your pool uh, because you're aligned mm -hmm. when you are aligned with somebody and they don't need to be the same as you. They don't need to be on the same level. They don't need to say the same words and listen to the same videos and listen to the same teachers, but just the alignment of the authenticity mm -hmm. can be felt. And um, so, so you guys are always welcome in my pool. <laughs> well, I can tell you that, I, you know, when I've swam in other people's pool, sometimes I've had like one of those diapers on because like <laughs> oh. I had pee, I was listen. peeing. But I was like peeing in my own diaper. So like I didn't share. No diapers in my pool. <laughs> Sorry. Not sure why. What I, you know exactly was. I just wasn't being as authentic, I guess. But that's not what you were talking about. So withdrawn. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but anyway, to my point is 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 authenticity, vulnerability, very, very um much resonate with me when when I when I think about my own true gut feelings. And when I talk to people today. Well, and I think um, that, you know, it's almost like I want to use the pool metaphor again, because it's almost like when you're learning how to be authentic and you're sort of seeing how that goes with people, you kind of like dip your toe in and, you know, you set a boundary or you like 
stand up for yourself and you see like, how does this person receive that? You know, like, how does this person react to this boundary? If the person's like, yeah, I respect that, you know, like, of course, take all the time you need or like, yeah, I understand why that was, you know, a priority for you and that I wasn't like your number one concern in that moment. And then you see like, oh, it's safe. Oh, it's safe to be in this pool, you know, and um, and that experience in and of itself is really, really vital in like kind of opening up new layers of authenticity because you don't just like jump into the pool and like into the deep up, end, you know, like yeah. it's, it's not around. really instantaneous, but like I feel Kim, like you were saying before, like y- you are practicing like standing up for your needs and like we can have a discussion about it whereas there have been conditioned relationships from the past before this awareness where you might have to kind of backpedal and be like hey listen I know I've always done it like this and that I've just been like endlessly available to you and I love you to death but that ends now. <laughs> but here's the thing. The red your your level of readiness wasn't here at that point until now. And I think that we've said this in previous episodes, are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? It's not until you've literally exhausted all other possibilities <laughs> that you can really lean into your authentic needs because you know you, you your mind will convince you time and time again that you're doing the right thing like remember that time that that person rejected you for having needs this is safer you know and the people who love you and the people who care about you and the people who want you to be thriving and healthy and comfortable and happy, those people will be like, of course, I understand. Of course, this doesn't change anything. You know, that's what we're really here to understand is like, we can't project how other people are going to receive our needs until we actually state them. So Ugh. that's really what we have to learn as adults. Mm. Yep. So, so good. And it's interesting because I wanted to say something on the heels of, of Kim, what you were sharing. And um, I remembered somebody shared this with me and I think I shared it with you guys, but I, th- I think it might be a really good uh, place to wrap up. It says, agreeing to things just to keep the peace is actually a trauma response. Mm. When you do this, you're disrespecting your boundaries. No more making yourself uncomfortable for others to feel comfortable. Oh my God, do I love that? Oh, that's awesome. You have, you have control now. You run your life. Take up space and use your voice. Love it. Love that. You have to send that to us. Yeah, I think I did. But sometimes you hear a quote and you're like, oh yeah, that's cool. And then sometimes you're going through th- something and you read that and you're like, holy crap, <laughs> right? <laughs> A thousand was such a good percent. wrap up of what we were talking about because I'm such a person who's been like, okay, I'll just, you know, go along and I'll just be okay. 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 Meanwhile, you're like, you know, it feels like shit. You feel uncomfortable. I'm not going to be uncomfortable to make you comfortable. Mm-hmm. Mm, so good. <clears throat> well, like Shira said, I think this is a really good place to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for sharing everything If you've enjoyed our conversation, please subscribe to our channel and be sure to let us know if you have any topic requests or questions by commenting below. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, everyone. Bye.